In this video we're going to take a look at applying this magnifying glass with hand over onto this image here to give a magnified look. We're also going to change the color of the background. So to make a start let's come back to our magnifying glass with hand. I've actually got this from a stock library but if you do a Google search for a magnifying glass there's hundreds out there so uh, take a look and also check out the stock libraries. Right. To make a selection of the magnifying glass with hand, all you need to do is pick up the quick selection tool. Now with the quick selection tool, let's just take a look under the tool options. Now I've got the add to selection. I've got the brush size of 35 pixels. I'm going to take that up to around about 50 pixels there. The brush setting, I've got the hardness set to 50%. I'm going to press enter or return to remove that panel. Let's drop this down as well. Oh, one other thing. Auto enhance, that's also ticked. Right, clicking down, I'm going to drag it round this area here. That looks pretty good, like that. Round this side, round we go. You'll notice it's gone over the top, round the hand there. That looks pretty good, like that. Just checking it out. Okay, we've got the center part missing. Clicking down, dragging that out. Got two rows of marching ads, but at the moment, what we have done is we have selected the white background. So we need to come up to select. We're going to go to inverse. Now we've selected the magnifying glass with hand. Right, next thing. We're going to come down to the tool options. We're going to click on refine edge. Now when refine edge opens, it'll probably open using the marching ant. So it'll be something like this. From the drop down menu here, the view, if you click on it, I'm going to go to overlay, which is showing it with the quick mask. Right, let's pop that down out of the way. And if we take a look around it, that does look pretty good. I'm going to use the spacebar, command or control. That's giving me the magnifying glass. I'm going to zoom into this area. Now just pressing down. So I've just got the space bar pressed down. Zoom in around here. That really does look like a very good selection. Not going to worry too much about areas. So we can see it's gone slightly over. I am going to click on the smart radius. I am going to take it up very, very slightly just to see what effect that has. In fact, that looks even better. Just pressing space bar again, coming around this area. Yeah, that's done a really good job. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the edge shift. I'm going to change it back to the marching ant so we can see exactly what's going to happen. Because with the edge shift, if I take it up to the plus 100, look at the way that selection comes out to the edge. If I drop it down to the minus 100, look at the way it tightens right up. It's now coming over the hand and the magnifying glass. What I'd like to do is just bring it in very slightly to the minus, probably around about minus 15 there. That looks pretty good. And we're now going to go to output selection here and I'm going to go to new layer. Now in new layer, I'm simply going to click on OK, click on OK. And there it is with a new layer. And if we take a look around there, yeah, that's done a really, really good job. OK, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up the move tool. So from the toolbox, select the move tool, click down, lift it up bringing it over to the tab and as we come over to the tab I'm going to release it in it goes and you can see it's gone in as a new layer I'm now going to use the move tool I'm just going to move it around I'm going to place it in this area here so it's over the word new we've got the lamp selected just moving it down into that position I'm going to go to uh, image we're going to go to transform we're going to go to free transform command T control T I'm going to make it a little bit bigger I'm going to press and hold down shift on the keyboard just to maintain all the correct proportions just taking it up into that area that would be pretty good once you're happy just click the green tick press enter or return there it is job done there's our magnifying glass on our image right now to make this central area here look as if it has been magnified we're going to come back to the quick selection tool we're going to go down to the tool options we're going to select the magic wand I've got the tolerance set to 15 I'm going to take that up a little bit higher I'm going to go for about I think the default is 32 from memory dropping it down slightly let's go for about uh, 20 I'm going to click down in the center of the magnifying glass so make sure you're working on the magnifying glass layer I'm going to click down there there's our selection that looks pretty good like that I'm going to remove that come and click on the background layer here now so the selection has gone from the magnifying glass to the background layer we're going to use command J control J that's command J control J that has now duplicated that uh, little area that we selected and you can see there it is there showing it as layer one if we just switch off the background layer there it is 
right next bring your cursor over the thumbnail press down command or control pressing down command or control you see that little square on the back that's going to tell us we can make a selection click down there's the selection back this is important because we need to make sure that everything is held in when we apply the filter which is going to be under filter we're going to go to distort we're going to go to spherize now when spherize opens you can see there's the preview. Can't see an awful lot with that, so I'm just going to click down on the minus, taking it out to that area there, clicking down, releasing it. This is on the default amount of 100%. We've got the mode set to normal. There's the before, there's the after. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to click down, and there it is. Right, <laughs> like the way that's working. While we've still got this area around here, this selection, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up the elliptical marquee tool so make sure from the selection here you've got the elliptical marquee tool that's this one here I've got the subtract from selection I'm going to bring my cursor over this area here I'm going to click down I'm going to drag it out pull in it so I've got that area given a little bit of a like a you know quarter moon effect for want of a better words that looks pretty good like that just the sort of thing I'm after right let's put in a new empty layer so we've now got a new empty layer we're going to go up to edit we're going to go to fill selection now with fill selection opens the content we're going to change to white so make sure you got white we're going to click OK to that that's now fill this area with white we're now going to go up to select we're going to go to deselect which is now deselected that selection which is pretty good right let's go to filter we're going to go to blur we're going to go to Gaussian blur and when Gaussian blur opens we're going to blur it by yeah, you can see the way that that's uh, working there. Let's take it back up to where it was, perhaps a little bit more on that. Round about that area, that's pretty good. Let's click OK to it. And we're just going to reduce the opacity down very, very slightly into that area just to give that little bit of a glow, just the way the lighting's coming in. What I'm doing is I'm looking at the lighting on the hand and you can see the way that's matching up there. You can always use Command T, Control T, which as we've seen before is the Transform tool. And I, you can just rotate that round a little bit more if you want to, just readjusting the position into something like this. And you can make it a little bit smaller as well by using the grab handles. Entirely up to you. But I like the way that's working so far. Right, let's have a look at the colour on the background. I'm going to drop down to the background layer. We're going to come up to an adjustment layer, and the adjustment layer we're going to use is the hue saturation. Now when this opens, we're going to go straight down to colorize. Now you can see the way that's colorized the background. We're going to take the hue slider up and we're going to take it up into that area there. What we got? We got 42. We're going to take the saturation down into this area here around about 10 12 tends to be my favorite setting for this and we're going to take the lightness up slightly into that area just to give a little bit of a bleached out as if it's an old photo yeah great stuff right close that down don't forget this is an adjustment layer so we can come in you can make any changes if you want to right how about a bit of a drop shadow now for the drop shadow what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the background layer we're going to use Command J Control J. That's Command J Control J. We have now duplicated the back. Uh, duplicated said background layer because that's what it says there. But we've now duplicated the magnifying glass. I'm going to click on this one. I'm just going to double click and I'm going to call this what it is, which is going to be a shadow. Now with the shadow layer, let's switch this off. We're going to put in an adjustment layer. We're going to go back to hue saturation, and with hue saturation, we're going to take the lightness right the way down to minus 100 you'll notice the whole image has gone black but if you drop down to this little icon here what this is going to do it's going to clip it to our shadow layer watch what happens as soon as we click on this there it is it's now working purely on our shadow layer right make sure you are now working on the shadow we're going to come up to filter we're going to go down to blur we're going to go back to Gaussian blur and we're going to blur it by just take it up a little bit more into this area here yes, something like that looks pretty good click OK so we've now taken the edge right off there if we switch this back on you can see the way there it is there there's our shadow looking pretty good I'm going to press V on the keyboard V on the keyboard is the shortcut for the move tool and you can see the way we can move our shadow around once again lining it up with that lighting putting it into this area here and we're going to come back to the opacity slider 
we're going to drop this down into that area just want to give it a little bit of a there it is there you see the way that's now just giving it a little bit of definition from the uh, the background and the hand there it is looking pretty good one finishing touch let's come down to the magnified area we're going to put in another adjustment layer this time we're going to go to levels don't forget you need to click on this to clip it to this layer so it's now purely working on our reflective part there I'm going to click on it I'm going to press alt or option you can see it's turned to white so we move it across it's those areas of black we don't want to get those we want to just back that up a little bit let's come to the whites there clicking down and you can see if I move it across that's what we want to avoid we want to avoid the white so I'm just going to bring this back into that area something like this come to the center slider just going to give it a little bit more definition so I'm going to move it to the right by doing this we're introducing more of the darker pixels clicking on the eye icon there's the before there's the after that looks pretty good like that so there it is there's our finished image go on give it a try everything with this is completely adjustable and so you can use it on a whole range of different subject matters so go on give it a go until the next time it is happy imaging and take care